Okay, so we, we are, we'll go over some of the halachot of the Seder night, and we'll focus also on the brachot. We aren't in Chelek Bet, we Um So we'll focus a bit on the brachot, and therefore we'll start from a night before the Seder night, when we check Hametz. Kat Hametz, we want to go over all of the halachot of Kat Hametz, just the halacha connected to the bracha we say on the Kat and we mentioned in the past that we can make or have three categories of brachot, of blessing. We have the katanenim, when we enjoy food. We have the kata mitzvot, when we do a mitzvah. Maybe one will say it's the spirituality of enjoying a mitzvah, maybe. And although we have a rule in halacha, mitzvot lovely are not people. Mitzvot were not given for us to have joy for them. But uh, we know that uh, part of, of uh, Judaism is one should, one should work Hashem from happiness and being happy in, in uh, doing mitzvot. So the kata mitzvot maybe shows our joy to mitzvot. And the third category is berkat hasheva, praising Hashem. You're praising Hashem. The first two categories, berkat hanenin and berkat mitzvot. There should be said, generally speaking, with a few uh, maybe different examples, but it should be said before doing the mitzvah or before eating. So we say, we eat an apple, we say her eats, before eating the apple, right? We say, we, we do a mitzvah of eating maro. We say the bracha before eating the maro. We don't say it afterwards. With Bukot HaShevach, Bukot HaOdaas, usually the Bukot HaOdaas thinking can all, will come afterwards. Bukot Amazon is thinking Hashem. Always, obviously, we think afterwards, after something happened. And Bukot HaShevach, praising Hashem, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be connected to the to the event itself. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Shabbat candles. Shabbat candles, as, uh, it's Bukot HaMitzvot. And that's a good example for something with that say the blessing after lighting the candle. And the reason for that is that uh, there's a question, when does a woman accept the Kabbat upon herself? So uh, some say, some poskim say, as soon as she says the bracha, la she mentions Shabbat, she mentions Shabbat, by mentioning Shabbat, she said it's Shabbat, because she can't light candles anymore. Therefore, she should first light the candles, and they say, then say the bracha. How does it go with Bukot Anenim or Bukot Mitzvot that we usually say the blessing beforehand? That's why women cover their eyes. And then when they uncover their eyes, so they uh, enjoy or get benefit from the candles. And since part of the reason candle, candle, Shabbat candles is to enjoy them on Shabbat, so by um, revealing maybe the Shabbat candles after the blessing, so that continues the mix. In, uh, in davening, those are after Shabbat? Yeah, generally speaking, yeah. Okay. That's right. Well, actually, you can also put into a few categories of Shabbat and uh, and Pila and Hoda'a, but we, we put them in one category. Um, okay, so usually because I mean, it's thought to be done before the mitzvah, and here comes the connection to uh, to eating or connection to we should say the, the bracha right before we do the mitzvah. For example, if I just take an, an example from an apple, because that's we, we, obvious, we eat apples hopefully every day, right? One apple a day keeps the doctor awake. Uh, <clears throat> especially if you ask uh, Steve Dobb. Right? So, so if we eat an apple, we say hey, it's, and right away we should eat the apple. We shouldn't have a half sec between eating and the apple, unless the half sec is somehow connected to, to eating. Okay, so we say a bracha, and unless the half sec is somehow connected to the eating, we, we, we eat right away. As soon as we started eating, so now if you want to talk, we can talk. Right, we, have, we had a bite, for the, now if you want to, we can talk. Same with the kata mitzvah. We we'll say the blessing of the Uru Chamez. The Uru Chamez because we are here in Mitzvah, which the idea of it is to take all the Chamez out of our house. So we say the bracha of the Uru Chamez, and 
right after we, we say the bracha, we should start doing the mitzvah without talking in between. As soon as we started doing the mitzvah, now we have to want to talk about something, so we can talk about, about something, okay? We, we should be focused on the mitzvah, we shouldn't maybe start talking smoothing and about different things, but we said the bracha, start uh, the mitzvah, and then if we need to talk about something, so we can do it. And now we skip 24 hours ahead to some of the mitzvot of the Seder night. For the Seder night, we have the num number four appears quite a lot in the Seder night, right? We have four cups, four matzot, not, not really four matzot, we have three matzot, only break one to two, so this will be a riddle, right? How do we have four matzot on the Seder night? So we have three matzot, we have four matzot, four cups, four, four sons, four lishnot of the yola, four, so, so number four appears quite a bit. And we also have four mitzvot that we do in the Seder night. Two of them are the writer, and two of them are the Rabbanan, at least in our days. So the Deoraita ones are saying the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the Haggadah, which we do it by the Haggadah, but the Haggadah is relatively new. I mean, it's very old, but for a nation 3,000 years old, so the Haggadah is new. Right? Um, so that's the Haggadah. The mitzvah of Matzah, matzah. eating matzah, which is Deoraita. The mitzvah of Maror, which uh, seems to Rabbanan, at least according to many poskim, because we don't have Korban Pesach anymore, unfortunately. The mitzvah of Maror, our days will be the Rabbanan. The mitzvah of the Rabbanan, then we have a question about Korech, we won't go into the Iyun here, but Rabbanan discusses it. And one more mitzvah of the Rabbanan, also got to do with four. One, two, uh, three is part of the mitzvah, of four cups. So four cups, we have four cups of the Rabbanan. So if, we, if we, this uh, category mm -hmm. talks about, uh, this shiru talks about brachot, let's just talk about uh, the brachot, especially the brachot of the cup. How many brachot hagafen do we say during the Seder night? Two. The two? Or three or four? Uh, because of gafen. Just like because of yeah. gafen? So, yeah. yeah. When you say it, uh... Oh, we say it at the at, at, for each cup. Uh, exactly. Yes. So the, the answer will be all two or four. All two or four. Let's think of the idea of two. We drink wine in the middle of the meal, uh, and the drink wine in the beginning of the meal. How many rachot of hagafin do I say? One. Only one. Only one, right? I said hagafin in the beginning. It goes for all of the wine that comes afterwards. If I say brikat amazon, and then I want to drink more wine, so what do I need to do? They are not a hagafen, so uh, it makes sense that if I, that's how the Shulchan Aruch and, and the Sfaradim, that's what they hold. Let's say one Brikat HaGafen in the beginning, in Kiddush, and then another Brikat HaGafen after Brikat Amazon on the, the third cup. Okay, so that's, that makes sense. The Gemara in Psachim in Kuf uh, discuss, says that the, our sages instituted uh, that they, they gave the four, four cups and each one is a mitzvah of its own. Each one st stands for, for itself. Some poskim understood. What does it mean that each mitzvah stands for itself? That it's disconnected from the previous cup. If let's say someone is, let's say he's uh, in the army or he's a doctor and he, he's on call and he needs now to run, he has a few minutes to run and to, to deal with a uh, patient or and he drinks just four cups one after each other. No. Right, they have mm -hmm. to be separated between each other, at least for, with a few of uh, waiting between them, and according to Manipo's scheme, also with saying the Haggadah or something in between them. And the idea is, it's not just a matter of drinking wine. If I want to drink a wine, so Hazar could say, well, don't take four cups, just take a big giant cup, and, and that's it. Okay, <laughs> that's good, that's it. If, if it's just a matter of wine, just take it. We'll get soon to the question of a giant cup. What we have a giant okay. cup? Can, can we, should we do it? Should we do it? As I said, that idea of the number four, or we have the four, four uh, languages of Keula, uh, the number four it takes all the directions. We we will have redemption from all the directions. Uh, we have four galuyot, four exiles of the nation. So the number four really appears in the idea of exile and redemption. We are waiting for the. Fifth, uh, for the inside, for the for the inner part of it, for the Kosher Eliyahu, 
give us this, as a spirit, spirituality of the of this world. That's maybe the number five. You have to make a bracha from both of each time. Oh, so, it's a one big meal. Why? So why do you have to make a bracha for each one? Nice. So since Chazal uh, made this mitzvah, which is actually in some aspects it's one big mitzvah of bringing four cups, but in a few aspects it's four separated mitzvot. For example, as we said, if we drink all of the cups together, we don't fulfill the mitzvah. It's not a matter of drinking four cups, it's one after each other. It's a matter of drinking four cups when they are separated, when each one has a meaning. One of them is Kiddush, one of them is the Mekit, Haggadah. One of them is Megat Amazon, one is Halel. So each one has its own unique meaning. And since each one has its own unique meaning, when I have the first cup, I can't have the second cup. Because if I have this, the first cup, and right away I have the second cup, it's just the first cup. It's just a very big first cup. So if each mitzvah is separated for the uh, many paskin, that's how the Ashkenaz involved, that each one needs to have a gaffin for itself. So when we say Hagafen on the Seder night, so we'll also know why we're saying Hagafen. We'll also know that each thing has is unique for itself. Maybe we can give you an educational uh, idea. We, we say that on the Seder night, and maybe it's very relevant for now, when we have the four sons, and each one is different. But in the end, all of them sit around the table. And that's our goal. That, uh, uh, oh, one is a Russia, one is a Chacha, one is a Tam, one that doesn't even know how to ask questions. Maybe one asks too many questions, right? In the end, all of them are supposed to sit around the table. The same with the four cups. Each one is is separated. It's unique, but each one is. That's what maybe what we can learn from the four. Okay, so now we go to the brachot. Let's go now to a, a question which many people ask, and the measure. How much? How much? Almost an endless... Um, endless uh, question because always we have the how much how much time how much matzah, matzah should we drink let's start with the easier one so if we get lost with the matzah at least we'll, we'll have an answer for the wine so the wine we drink a revit ever ever eat how much is a revit there's a there's a machloket which also uh, affects also the measurements of liquid and also the measurements of of, um, of solids like matzah um, how much is a kazait? How much is a kabitza? How much is a revit? And there's a big difference between the grachnae and the chazonish. The grachnae, generally, generally speaking, is about half the measurements of the chazonish, maybe a bit, a bit more, but so the, there's a big difference between them. According to the, to the grachnae, and many, many poskim hold like the grachnae, a revit is about 86 uh, milliliters. Okay, we'll, we'll tell you how much it is. And according to the chazonish, it's about 150. A good way to remember it. The gematria of cos happens to be 86. Okay, so cos hagun happens to be uh, 150. So, okay, so that's a great way to, to remember it. Had the it's it's a, it's a, so it's a man, it's, it's a man, it's like a So, melolugma. We'll also get to the, to the measurement of melolugma. Part of the okay. amount sometimes different for kiddish, or if we want to, or does it differ? Shabbat, uh, exactly. We will we'll answer just a moment if there's a difference between Shabbat and uh, and uh, other, other, other things. So there's a mahokat here of how much is the revit, and it comes from the Rambam mentions measurements, and we have the measurements of an olive and, 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 and kabitza. And the question is, are our olives smaller than the olives of the time of Hazal? And just yesterday I went to Ocher Ad, and there are so huge olives, and we go the biggest olive we have today. And that was smaller. So there's a big question here of how much exactly everything is. Uh, and it's like it's just look outside and see what the olives are. If you go to, you can find very big olives. When we get to mass, it's a bit harder because then the question is how do we measure it? Volume, weight, but, but we'll get to the massa, hopefully. Um, it's also good. There's a it's part of the same machloket. Uh, how much is a tefah? How much is an ama? Okay, and we have a sukkot. Uh, how 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 long should the hadas be? Right. So usually, our rabot and Rulavi will have longer than that. But it's it's part of the same uh, um, question of measurements between the gachnae and the chazon Um How much is it? If you take a, a disposable cup, usually a disposable cup is between one eighty and two hundred cc milliliters. 
So if we go according to the Chazal Ish, so the measurement of a Revi'it is about three quarters of a disposable cup. If we go according to the Grachna, so it's a bit less than half a disposable cup. It's not so much. Mm-hmm. Those are simple plastic cups that you buy the, the sleeves of a... Mm-hmm. So different sizes, but they're between, usually between 180 and 200. It, it says in the packet. But you can also measure, measure if you have a measuring cup. Okay, it's just to give you more or less the, the idea of how much it is. So a revit, really, according to the Grach Na'e, isn't so much. So much. There are many, many Muslim hold like the Grach Na'e. And the Mishnah Bura writes in a few places that in the midst of the Deoraita, and maybe that's what you're referring to, in the midst of the Deoraita, we go by the Chazadish. No more Machbir. The rabbinical mitzvah, so we go by, we can go by the Grach Na'e. Now we mentioned the mitzvah of drinking four cups is rabbinical. Mm-hmm. But since it's a rabbinical mitzvah, um, so for kid, it's kiddush. Oh, so so kid, so kid was kiddush. Yeah, was kiddush. We mentioned in the past since we're learning the halachah of kiddush, and according to Rashi, that's a very unique shita. According to Rashi, at least on the Shabbat, there's and for all of the Yom Tov, there's a mitzvah midor right to kiddush or wine. So maybe according, maybe according to that, but that's a very unique shita. First cup, we should make sure we have a revit according to the Chazon Ish. And even that isn't so big. And the rest of the cups, we can have a, a smaller revit. How much should we drink of it? If we don't drink the whole revit, we need to drink only, and here comes two criteria. also of revit, also most of the revit, and also melolugmach. The, the fill up the mouth on one side, so that's called melolugma. Usually, for a medium person, a melolugma, I mentioned it a few years ago, so I don't, I don't remember the exact measurements for myself, okay, but it's, it's individual. It's about 50 cc's more or less. So if we drink, if one drinks 60 cc's, okay, 60 milliliters of the cup, so it's also most of the revit and also melolugma. So we don't need to drink a whole a full repeat. We need to the, the cup needs to have a repeat inside it, and we need to drink most of the repeat, most more than half of it, more, most of the repeat. And for most people, it will cover also the how much the mouth is filled and also how much uh, the most of the repeat. Okay, so if one drinks, I'll say let, let's say sixty cc, sixty milliliters, that's uh, enough for both criteria. Okay, so that's of how much wine should we drink. Some people. Go to a Seder night, and they think that we like we big mass looking at the watch all the time. So that's how we also drink the wine, looking at the watch all the time. So before we get to the to the measurements and how, how should we measure the time, it says that that uh, Chazal established this mitzvah of drinking or cups in a way of freedom. The free people and a free person drinks wine. A free person drinks wine. Um. Soon we'll discuss about what someone if someone can drink wine. But the free person drinks wine. And looking at the at your stopwatch and drink it fast, 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 and trying to drink it in one sip because uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure if that's called the recherut. Uh it's like he'll be also the mitzvah, but, but someone who drinks it like so stressed, like a slave, he needs to drink it fast, fast before his master will come and catch him drinking the wine and punish him. So it's, it's not the best way of doing the mitzvah. We should drink the mitzvah. Why we leave on the side? So how long should it take us to drink? There's a machloket. There's an argument here between the Rambam and the Ram. According to the Rambam, we should drink the wine in the time it takes a normal person to drink a revit. So this is that we have to drink the uh, most of a revit, and let's say three quarters of a revit. In the time it takes a normal person to drink a whole revit. So let's say, let's, let's, let's say, it takes a person 40 seconds to drink a whole revit. And how much do you need to drink? Just a bit more than half. Okay, let's say three quarters. So what should take us 30 seconds to drink? We can drink in 40 seconds. I, mean, uh, I didn't measure it. Uh, okay, maybe, it's, maybe it's less than 40 seconds, maybe 10 seconds. I, I didn't measure it, but just imagine. We need to drink. More than a repeat, not a full repeat, according to the Rambam, in the time that it takes for a normal person to drink a whole repeat. 
I think that some people have a sip and kind of breathe in the middle and then continue drinking. But that's the normal time of drinking a bit. Drink, uh, maybe stop, stop so you can swallow. Uh, drink a bit more, stop so you can swallow. And then continue drinking, finish drinking. Right, so... So if we really think about it in the halachic measurements without the, the, the seconds running in, in our face, just drink the, the wine in a normal way. There's even a more mekel shita, the Ravan. Ravan, and that gives us the measurement of eating, he says that even at the time of, of drinking a bit, we, we don't need to be so fast. Even if we drink it in the time it takes a normal person to eat half a loaf of bread, that's fine. So if I'm measuring how much is half a loaf of bread, how much how much does it take to eat it? Two minutes, nine minutes. Obviously, we can drink a repeat in that time. That's obvious. So we should try to drink the repeat and obviously to do it since it's very easy to do it in the times of the Rambam. Okay. If someone he, he can, he just can't do it. As long as he drinks, so let's say less than four minutes, so he's still your seven. Okay, so that's the we discussed about the measurement, how much we should drink, a bit more than a repeat, more than a repeat, and the time it takes us to drink the repeat. How do we drink the wine? We drink it leaning. We drink it leaning. Then all the question of leaning, there's uh, why do we lean? Why do we lean? At that time. At that time. They would lean. Freeman would Freeman lean. would lean, right? They, they didn't have chairs like we have. They used to lie down on the floor and they have had very, very low tables and, and pillows and cushions. Lean on the floor like that, and ha- that's how they used to eat. By the way, I saw that as uh, Mordechai Liao, he used before the Seder night, he used to go and check all the chairs around the table to make sure that it's comfortable for everyone. The idea of leaning is so we, we will be comfortable and, and it will be nice to, to sit down. So he used to go and sit down on all the chairs, lean a bit on the side to make sure that. that Comfortable and clean. There's a machoka between the Rishonim. Most of the Rishonim say that even in our days we need to lean. In our days we need to lean. Some Rishonim say, like the Ravya, the Ravan, they say, well, the leaning is only for the times of Chazal, because that's how the that's how free people used to eat. But today we don't. Eat when we lean, and I'm sure that when we were kids, or, or if we see younger kids lean, so we tell them sit straight, right? <laughs> That's why probably they're waiting for Pesach. They're free people. The parents will not tell them sit straight and eat like this and get dirty and everything. And the parents will say, okay, it's fine. So the so a few showing him not much, not much. A few show him say that today we don't eat to lean. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any case, people leave, so uh, I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah. No, we do it maror, it's, it's rabbinical. We, we, no, do we lean for maror? No, we don't eat if you right. We lean only. For, there are some parts of the Seder where we do not lean. We do not lean, right. We lean only for the parts which uh, we do it as, as three people. The maror, we remember the hard times in Egypt. Okay, what happens if someone that doesn't sleep? Okay, so. Do over. Do over. Okay, we so do over to be your say most Can you please most ask everyone you to mute? Leave. But between the some of the cups, like between the first cup and second cup, the most or third and fourth, we don't want to add any more cups. Between the second and third, that's the meal. We can drink as much wine as you want. So if one forgot to lean for the second cup, he can uh, drink another cup and and and, uh, and lean. But if one forgot to lean on, on the first cup. Okay, and if now he drinks another cup, it looks like he's adding a fifth cup. And also, since some Rishonim say that today we don't need to lean, so um, so therefore he we doesn't need to to drink the cup again. Okay, because uh, our time is going fast, let's go over the matzah. How much matzah to drink? I just want oh, just, just wine. What wine should I drink? Three people. Drink good red wine. Everyone who drinks wine knows that red wine usually is better than uh, than white wine, and obviously better than grape juice. So lechatchila, one should drink red wine if he can, and if he if now he will be sick if he drinks wine. If he won't be able to participate in the seder t- table, so he can do a mixture. He can have grape juice. He can have other things. But lechatchila, one should have good red wine, and if he can, so even grape juice is fine. 
Better, if that's the better, <laughs> have good good wine. <laughs> if it's if it's have if it's a gaffin, so it's also fine. It's a gaffin. Yeah. That's what you like. I mean, that's it's you like. Wine, it's, 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 it's the eyes of the bottle. Okay. Well, so, the red wine, the wine, the dam, the... Also, the dam, and also it's better. It's like being like three people. Yes. So, so, yeah. so we, typically we prefer red wine. Masa, the masa, by eating the masa, we have a few mitzvot here. Uh, we have the mitzvah of hamotzi, like any uh, yomko. We have the mitzvah, uh, mitzvah with the right to eat at least one kazait matza on the in Pesach, the seder night. So that's why we have the bracha of also hamotzi and also matza. Also of Hamutzi Lechem in Aretz, and also of Masa. Um, and here comes the question of how much is a kazait? Is it like this or like this, right? Uh, how big is a kazait? And how far do we need to eat? Okay, so let's answer first the, the, the second question, because it's the easier one to answer. Achinat Pras, Pigde Achinat Pras, is half a loaf of bread. How much is a loaf of bread? Somewhere between maybe eight, Kazaitim, nine kazaitim, nine kazaitim. Loaf of bread is much more than a kazait. We half loaf of bread. So it could be that they say we eat bread fast because matzah is hard to eat. Yeah, but even if uh, if we take okay, it's easier. We eat bread twice as fast than we eat matzah. Okay, if I need to eat one kazait of matzah in the time it takes me to eat, or it takes a normal person to eat half a loaf of bread. According to the Minchat Chinuch, it's not just how much the time it takes it to eat a half loaf of matzah. Okay, so we have time. There's no need in, in cutting the matzah, um, chewing it, and then swallowing it at one go. If you eat it without stopping, okay, breathe obviously in the middle. There's no worry about the time. Okay, we, we eat the matzah. We need to eat one night of matzah at a time to eat. Half a loaf of bread, and even if it's, it takes it takes twice as long to eat matzah, that's fine with the time. Why is there a time though? Because we need to eat all the things we eat. Uh, uh, it's a kazait with the pas. According to the Gemara, it's a shiur with the oraita. It's a measurement with the oraita that if we eat kazait, kazait in too much too, too much time, it's like eating half a kazait if today and half uh, tomorrow. Okay, so for the kazak for the for the piece of pieces to, to become as one kazait, they need to be eaten in a normal time it takes a person to eat a meal. How much is that? So we have a machloket between somewhere between four minutes, nine minutes, so the most machmo will be four, the most machmo will be nine, it's somewhere maybe six and seven, somewhere there is the average. But but again, you don't need to stand there with your watch looking at, at, the, at the time. Okay. okay. How, how, how much is a kazait? How, how much is a kazait? We mentioned already that we have a machloket between the Anish and the Na'er, which actually begins even beforehand. Uh, 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 olives, our, our, our olives, the smaller olives, and the bigger olives. How much? How, how, how big are they? There's another machloket um, between the Sephardim and Ashkenazim. Do we measure by weight or by volume? We measure by weight with matzah at least, so the weight will be uh, a bit more. So we have to eat more matzah. Okay, so so the minimum amount for the, of a kazait is about a third of a machine matzah. That's the minimum amount. So when we eat a kazait, we should eat a, at least at least a third of of a machine matzah. That's the minimum amount. What, what type of olive is it? What is it? That's a big olive or a small olive? If we go by first, we go by volume. Okay, and then we go by the gachne. Yeah, I, I, it goes ways. What's what's chumis? What's not chumis? Less than an olive. Yeah. That means a third of a matzah would not. Yeah, but we yeah yeah, yeah. Not, we, we we are we are machmir on chumis and the matzah in front. You're right, or we are machmir more more than a. Uh, we take bigger measurements for eating the matzah than we're going to be for kazait of chametz, especially since we're very machmir with chametz. Okay, but with eating the matzah, so so some say it will be, as I said, about a third of a, a volume of a machine matzah. Some say it has to be half, and uh, some say it needs to be almost a uh, full size of a machine matzah. Okay, so so uh, that's that's the, the the different 
polymers we have. So according to that for me, we have to have uh, four mass cells on the uh, green uh, soda. Um, so just we should, we should know the different uh, things we have. We also here, three casitim, four casitim, and we have mozi, matza, and then uh, korech, and then afikoman. Uh, um, so maybe at least in the first one, we should eat uh, Ashkenazi, maybe half a matzah, two thirds of a matzah. The rest of the thing of the shirim, so we can be make and eat about a third of the matzah since many of us hold it. If one feels that he can eat more, so he should do that. <laughs> and as uh, as we mentioned at the time, our idea really the is uh, eat through the mitzvah from happiness. And we're happy to eat a special matzah. I mean, we all have a pesach kasher. Yes.